Hello and welcome to lecture 22 of Math 1B03. In today's lecture we're going to be looking at uh, section 4.3 of the textbook on linear independent sets and bases. So in the last couple of lectures we've looked at two important concepts in uh, linear algebra and normally when you're describing a vector space we've looked at the notion of linear independence and we looked at the notion of span. So just to keep in mind we first talked about these concepts in Rn and now we're trying to generalize these concepts to an arbitrary vector space. And what we're going to be doing in today's lecture is we're going to talk about what a basis of a vector space is and what you want to keep in mind is that a basis uh, combines these two concepts. It combines whether linear uh, combines linear independence and with span. And when you put these two together, you get what a basis is. Okay, so let me make myself vanish. Hopefully, I vanish. I'm just going to double check. Yep. Okay, everything's fine. Okay, so today, as I said, we're going to look at a basis, and let's just start with the definition of a basis. So. Take H to be a subspace of a vector space V. Okay, that should be the letter A, not the U. An index set, so just if you're not clear about what I mean here by index set, that just means you're putting the vectors in some particular order. So an index set of vectors is a basis for, oops, I didn't want that, I wanted the hand here, uh, is a basis for H that the following two conditions are satisfied. First of all, that the set of vectors in B is linearly independent. So that's one property that we want. And the second property we want is that B spans H. Okay, so IE H can be written as, uh, as linear combinations of B1 through BP. And probably the most important time that we need to know this is if H is equal to V. So if we're talking about the vector space V, uh, we call B a basis for our vector space V. So a basis is a set of vectors that is both linearly independent and spans the set of vectors. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this, but I thought I would first start off with like two examples here or some examples here to help you kind of visualize or visualize and help visualize this concept. And also try to show you that you've seen the notion of a basis before, but we just haven't called it a basis. So E1 through EN, so this is uh, the vector with one in the first spot and zero everywhere else. E2 is the vector with one in the second spot and zero in everywhere else. It's a basis for RN. And so to be a basis, you just need to verify that this set is both linearly independent and spanning. And we've actually done this a couple times, but I thought it would be good to just go through the proof again. So the set E is linearly independent, right? Since what we're in, interested in is looking at, you know, the salute, all the CIs that allow us to do the following. So C1 plus the first vector plus C2 plus the second vector up to CN equaling to the last vector. Right. That is equal to the vector C1 up to Cn, and that will equal the zero vector if and only if C1, C2 equals up to, uh, up to Cn all equal zero. So the only way that these vectors here, or I guess maybe the vectors in my set E, will combine to give me the zero vector is if all the coefficients all the scaling coefficients are zero. So that checks that it's a linearly independent set. And now let's check that it's a, a spanning set. So E spans Rn since for any vector A, A1 through An inside of Rn, we want to be able to write it as a linear combination of the elements in E. And we can do that because 
the vector a is equal to a1 times the first vector plus a2 times the second vector up to a and up to the last vector, and that is in the span of e1 up to en. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if you can hear it. There's some sawing going around in the background. As I mentioned, my porch is getting rebuilt, so I must apologize for the noise. Okay. Um, so we want to give a name to this, and we call e, and we've actually been using this name uh, throughout the course, but now we can justify it. We call e1 through en the standard basis for Rn, okay? So for Rn, there's actually many, many different bases for Rn, but E1 through En is distinguished and we call it the standard basis. There are standard bases for some of the other vector spaces. The standard basis for Pn, which is the set of all polynomials of degree n, is one t, t squared up to Tn. So this is considered the standard basis for Pn, since any polynomial in Pn can be written as a linear combination of these n plus 1 polynomials. So let me just give you one other vector space that we've looked at. We've looked at the set of all 2 by 2 matrices with entries coming from the real numbers. It's a vector space, and what I want you to think about uh, is what would be a basis for this vector space? Okay, so give it a, set, a thought. What you need to do is think of, can you find a set of linearly independent matrices that also span all the two by two matrices? And after the break, we'll work through this example. <laughs> 